Hi, thanks for checking out our channel here and one of our many, many videos that we got on YouTube. We got about 650 give or take videos on YouTube now. This is um, we're near the end of April of 2021, so whenever you're watching this, we might have 700, we might have 650, we might have 1,000 videos right now. I don't know. Well, we make videos all the time, electric fence boxes and different things about them, how to fix them, how to set them up, how they work, review videos, all sorts of stuff. So, but this video is going to be about um, a Gallagher lightning diverter and how to wire one up. Uh, this is going to be, you'll have to kind of use your imagination a little bit, but the, because I don't have a, I don't, I'm not going outside, I don't have a, I don't have any way of filming while I'm outside without it being too windy or you can't hear me. So, <clears throat> You have to visualize a little bit, but the idea behind it, on the way I'm going to show you, in the field would be the same way. Just got to um, imagine it while right now we're out here in the when we're in here in the um, shop. Okay, this is a Gallagher lightning diverter. It's made for lightning protection. It's it's um, it works on any brand of unit out there. It doesn't matter what brand it is. Um, I would probably not use it on anything smaller than half a joule i would go probably a half joule or joule or larger um just because of how this thing works what it does is one side is ground you see a little ground symbol right there and the other side is light is a hot side has a little lightning bolt symbol and it goes in series between the your lead out wire hot wire from your hot the lead out wire from your hot side of your charger and the start of your fence it goes in series between the two, and it can be mounted outside. It comes with a set of screws. You can, you know, it goes right through this little hole here and down here. Once you take this little lid off here, um, just pop it off here. And so there's two screws. They'll go right, one through there, one through there. And you screw it right to the side of a house, right through the side of the building, the wood post, however you want to mount it. Most people put it out on the wood post. Because it needs to be close to your ground rods as well. And if you got multiple rods, if you say you got two or three or four or five rods, whatever, um, this is how I do it. Gallagher, somebody else might tell you differently. Anyways, but, so but this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a wire. This like it goes in series between the start of your fence and your hot wire of your charger. So let me. I need to find some wire first. Give me just a second. All right, so. So say your charger is mounted on the fence or mounted on the wall, and we're going to use this wire right here. This is going to be our lead-out wire. So you've got a wire coming off your fence side, like normal. So you get your hot wire coming out, and like I said, it doesn't have to be right by the charger. It can be out on the fence somewhere. It seems between. It needs to be in series between this, your hot wire where your charger's sitting at and the start of your fence so so you got to run 50 feet or 150 feet or however far the wire is going to come out of the hot side of the charger it's going to connect on to the hot side which is the right side of your diverter and there's like there's a couple little nuts there a couple little washers and then uh, before you tighten it down you can either have one continuous wire, where to say you make a little um, loop in it, cut it back, and then keep on going. But I would, this is the way I do it, just put the wire under, you know, between the two washers, and then you get um, another wire, slip it underneath there, and this goes over to your fence. And then you take a nut, you take this nut, and you tighten it down. So technically, you'll have two connections on here. One from come from the hot side of your charger to the fence terminal, hot terminal of the um, diverter, and then the wire come off of here over to your fence. And then you've got your ground side here and your ground side here. This is how I do it. Uh, it has instructions on the back, tells you how to install it and everything, but well, I'm just kind of simplifying it to a point. Um, say you got three or four ground rods that are like say eight, 10 foot apart. The, the hot, ground side of the, of the charger Goes down to the first ground rod like normal. Then you got the other two or three or four ground rods all tied together. On the diverter, I never tie it into the first ground rod because that's where the charger is tied in at. So if lightning comes across this gap to go to ground, it can, you know, electrically it's tied it to here. It can still feed itself in here. 
So Lightning is looking to go to ground the easiest way it can. So I always say to hook up the first ground rod to this one, have all your other ground rods tied together like it has been for years or months or weeks or whatever it's been. Then on your ground side of your diverter, you're going to take a, a, a wire. It doesn't have to be insulated. It can be um, uh, some leftover fence wire, whatever you've got laying around. You're going to put it in here and tighten it up. You'll want to use a pair of pliers, a channel wash. Just, just make it snug. Don't have to torque it down like you're putting on a set of lug nuts. So this is where you're going to have to, imagination, you have to use your imagination a little bit. Normally this wire, you're not going to tie it back to here like I'm going to do it. But you're going to tie this wire here down to either, say you got three ground rods, you want to tie it into, I always tie it into either the second one or the third one. That way it's not tied directly onto the first one where the charger's tied in at. Because lightning's looking to go to ground. So once it hits the third one, say it hits the third ground rod, hopefully by the time it hits the second or the first one, it's already depleted all of its energy and it's gone. If you tie it into the second one, it's either going to go to the third one or the first one. It's going to hit that one, hopefully disperse and be done before it ever gets to the charger. And so I don't have a ground rod, of course, sitting in my shop laying here. I'm not hooked up to a fence or anything. So this is where you have to use your imagination. So after you get that all wired up, then you have to adjust your gap on here. So before you power it on, so electrically it's done. But there's a little screw on here that you can turn with a flat screwdriver or a Phillips screwdriver and you see as you turn it it moves that little lever inside there at the very highest point like I say 12 o'clock that's the widest that the gap can be because inside this little black plastic thing a little metal tip on the end there and there's a metal plate that runs up inside here and kind of see the silvery looking thing in there so right now the gaps about that far apart roughly so after you get it all wired up screwed the post and everything Get that, turn this screw all the way to the right. Go back and turn your fence charger on. And then go to your diverter and slowly turn that screw to the left. And when it does it, when it comes down, that lever comes down, the gap gets closer and closer and closer together. Eventually, depends on the size unit, it could be a quarter inch gap, half inch, eighth inch. Eventually, you're going to get down so far as and start sparking inside there. Like it is, see? See how it's flashing and arcing inside? You want to back it up to the right until it stops sparking. And then you're set. So if you look at it, we're about halfway down, give or take, and that's where it stops sparking. So I turned it down just until it started spark, tweaked it back a little bit to the right, just enough to where it stopped sparking. So lightning's looking to go to ground the easiest way it can. And it's a lot easier for lightning to jump across the little eighth inch, quarter inch gap, where the gap spacing is. A lot easier to jump across a little gap like that and go to ground than it is to fight the internal resistance of the charger. So these diverters are really, really good. Uh, they work on any brand of fence charger, big or small. I, like I said, I wouldn't use it on anything, anything honestly, really anything less than one jewel or half a jewel. I wouldn't go any smaller than that. You're just wasting your money. Um, I would use on a half jewel or jewel or bigger. Uh, and that gap spacing varies from unit to unit, brand to brand, sized fence charger, you know, jewel. It could be a 50 jewel or 5 jewel. You know, the gap's going to be a little bit different inside here. And then then you're set. Then you're done. That's all you got to do. So hopefully I'll recap this real quick. So the diverter needs to be in series between the start of your, where your charger's at and hot lead coming out of it and the start of your fence. So typically people mount them on the wood post or wherever, the, wherever they want to mount them at. So it needs to be in series between the two. So you have a hot wire come out of your, your hot side of your charger like normal. comes over to the diverter. And on the same terminal, this side of the diverter, run a jumper wire from here over to your fence and tie it on there. Then tighten the nut down. Just, just, just crank it down a little bit until it gets snug. Don't over torque it and break something. Then on your ground side, uh, ground side of the charger, run a wire comes off there. goes to your first ground rod like normal. And then you've got, say, two or three ground rods or five ground rods, whatever. Tied together like they have been. Take a wire off the ground side of the diverter. Run it down to that last ground rod or third ground rod or second ground rod 
whatever one's closest to you that's not the first one and then tighten it down and then before you go plug the unit on or if it's hooked battery powered one before you hook the battery up turn it on turn that gap all the way to the right the screw all the way to the right which points that little lever at 12 o'clock straight up and down then you go back to the unit turn it on plug it in hook it to the battery however it powers up go back to the diverter you use a flat screwdriver or Phillips it does, it, either one will work and then you slowly turn to the left and that gap that little lever comes down Let's see if I can do it without shocking myself I'm going to turn it down it's closer and closer to I'll make sure I can't get shocked anywhere. Okay, should be good. Hold it up here just in case. So we're going to turn it down. See, it's sparking. Tweak it back just a little bit to the right until it stops. A little bit more. There it goes. So yeah, because lightning is looking to go to ground the easiest way it can. It's a lot easier to jump across that gap to go to ground than it is to fight the charger's resistance inside. So they work really good. Um, they work, like I said, they don't discriminate. The Gallagher divers don't care what fence charge is hooked up to them. It could be Gallagher, it could be Zariba, Paramax, Speedrite, doesn't matter. Um, these work really good. They're probably one of the easiest ones to use. There's a couple other divert brands that sell diverters or make them or sell them um, that are probably the same price. These are about $28 to $30 for one of these things. Um, these are really handy if you've got a lot of lightning problems. They're not an end-all, be-all fix for lightning, but um, they, they are designed to take multiple hits, depending on how directive hits you get. I, I've known guys that, that have these spread on different fence systems for 20 30 years and still running and everything's still working fine now I've, had, I've talked to other people that have sent me pictures and text messages say hey can you fix this and they'll show me a picture of their unit be sitting in about three pieces on the ground then they'll show me the picture of the diverter the back side's still screwed to the wood post but the front side's been blown right off the thing and it's just kind of hanging there with some wires so it depends on how directive hit you get but the good thing is they do come with a warranty they're a one-year warranty on the diverters on the Gallagher ones anyways. Um, so these things are really handy tool, or not tool, or really handy piece of equipment. Um, one thing another guy told me a long time ago, um, he's a fence contractor out of like Michigan, Wisconsin area. He builds a lot of electric fence and does a lot of uh, repairs to fence chargers when he, on ones that he sells. And he was getting a lot of lightning calls and fence chargers being burned up from lightning. Well, he had diverters on there, like normal, which cut down a lot of his problems. But what he ended up doing, he, some people have pretty big fence systems, you know, 50, 60, 150, 300 acres or, or more. And, you know, that's a big lightning rod out there to, hit, to absorb that lightning on the fence side. So what he did was, he learned this from somebody else, and, and he puts it into practice now. He has the first diverter installed at the beginning of his fence like normal like I was explaining then what he'll do he'll go back to the back corner somewhere take another diverter screw it to the corner post back there and then basically wire it up kind of how I did uh, he'll take an, a separate ground rod with him like I say a three foot or six foot ground rod take it out there knock it in the ground a ways mount this on the post adjust the gap to where it's the widest take just a jump one wire from the hot side of the diverter to the fence and the ground side of the diverge that one ground rod and then turn the fence charger back on and then adjust this gap to get that set then it, he said it gives lightning two options to go do i go this diverter or this diverter he said it cut down his problems with lightning calls and lightning issues by like 40 percent just by adding a second diverter in that back corner somewhere you know and i was like man that's a you know for 28 bucks man that's a you know cheap kind of cheap insurance to maybe help out with lightning and lightning is hard thing to persuade to go a different direction but these diverters you know will work really really well and um, you can pick them up at the local feed store and go online and buy them uh, we are a, a gallagher dealer but you know you can buy them from whoever you like um there's some information right there fencerfixer.com or my phone number or email address and address but we, we're a repair place by trade but we do 
occasionally sell something, not very often, but um, but we did uh, got a diverter here for a guy. I figured I would make a video on how to install one. Um, you know, you got to kind of use your imagination. This was on the bench. You know, you got to think of it being out in the field, at the fence. Then, but the electrical part of it's all the same. And how I did it, just I don't tie the diverter straight to the terminal. It goes down to your second or third or fourth ground rod, and the hot side goes down the over the fence like or over to here like normal. And the ground side goes to first ground rod like normal. So hopefully it helps you out. If you got any questions, get a hold of us. And until next time, we'll see you guys later on.